According to the definition of capacitance, the charge on a capacitor is equal to the capacitance of the capacitor multiplied by the voltage or the potential difference across the capacitor, represented by this formula here. Let's write some simple equations to represent the initial conditions of both capacitors. I have now written out four different equations representing both capacitors before and after their plates are touched. The subscripts 1 and 2 represent the capacitors 1 and 2, where I'm using capacitor 1 to represent the 2.5 microfarad capacitor with a 746 voltage, and I'm using capacitor 2 to represent the 6.8 microfarad capacitor with a 562 voltage. The initial and final subscripts represent before and after the plates are touched together. There are a few things to note about this situation with the way the problem describes it. The problem specifies that the capacitors are disconnected from the batteries before the plates are touched together. This means that the total charge on the capacitor system is always equal to the sum of the charges on each capacitor, since there is no battery to supply them with additional charge. Another important thing to realize about this situation is that since we're touching the positively charged plates on the capacitor to each other, and we're touching the negatively charged plates to each other, then that means that the charges on the plates that we're connecting will be equalized between each other, the same effect that would occur if we were to touch any other pair of conductors to one another, where the charge is evenly distributed between them. Because of this, the final voltage in each capacitor will be the same as each other, so V1F will be equal to V2F. I have now removed the 1 and 2 subscripts from the final voltages to show that they are the same value. Now let's apply the law of conservation of energy. Since we established earlier that no charge is entering or leaving the capacitor system, that means that the sum of the initial charges on the capacitors will be equal to the sum of the final charges on the capacitors. Let's now rewrite these charges in terms of the capacitances and the voltages. Like so. Notice that since the VF variable is shared among both of these terms, it can be factored out. The potential difference across each capacitor is the first thing that the problem asks us to find. So let's take our equation and solve it for V sub F by dividing both sides of the equation by C1 plus C2. This is our final equation that we'll use. All that's left to do for the first part of the problem is to plug in our values for the initial voltages, which are given to us here, and the capacitances, which are constant and are given to us here and here. Remember to be consistent with your variables. So for example, I set this first capacitor as C1, so I'll be using this capacitance, 2.5 microfarads for C1, and this voltage, 746 volts, for V sub 2, V sub 2i to be specific. Remember to use SI units and to convert these uh, units of microfarads, or these measurements of microfarads, into measurements of farads by multiplying the capacitances by 10 to the negative 6. If you do this correctly, you should end up with a potential difference of 611.46 volts, or if we're going to round this to the proper number of significant figures, 611 volts. We're still not done yet, though. The problem also asks us to find the charge on each capacitor after the situation occurs. Well, if you go back to our earlier work, you'll notice that we already established the formulas we'll need to use for the final charges on, the ca on each capacitor after we touch their plates together. So just take these formulas, plug in the capacitances that the problem gave us, and now we can use our newly found potential difference for the VF variable. If you plug these into your calculator properly, you should find a charge in capacitor 1 of about 1.53 times 10 to the negative 3 coulombs, and a charge on capacitor 2 of about 4.16 times 10 to the negative 3 coulombs.